Hello friends. Um, welcome back. It is a little awkward for me to be filming this because I'm next to my sister's house in a neighborhood that I don't know and it is 7.30 in the morning. So <laughs> people are already driving by and I thought I'd have the street to myself. Ooh, there's already someone walking by. So hang on one second. <laughs> okay. So today's video, I need to start trying to explain some of our process after my mom had died but um, I'm not you'll have already seen hopefully I haven't decided but ho hopefully you'll have already seen my explanation of what happened with my mom in very minute details to keep um, that private within our family because certain things did happen that were kind of private and sacred to us um, at her passing I have a few snippets of video from when Jason got to Utah with the girls because he came separate from me. And I just wanted to explain from the point when he got there, um, just our experience as a family because it's the only footage I have of all of us and our experiences. And I, a lot of it is not even spoken. Um, it was just, I took videos when people didn't know and wanting to capture it. And I knew I would be able to explain it later. So that's what this is. And it's a little uncomfortable because I haven't dealt with the emotions quite yet. Um, I haven't gone back home. I haven't seen my friends. I haven't gotten that support yet. Um, and I've kind of been in neutral land here at my sister's house for a week. So bear with me as I kind of get through this. And I have a, a little <laughs> cheat sheet in front of me just so that I don't miss anything. Um, Anyway, so we're just gonna kind of dive in. Um, like I said, when I found out about my mom, um, I hopped on another flight uh, about 10 hours after her passing and flew home. So I was home with my family for a few days. Um, before, well, with my growing up family, <laughs> with my family family, for a few days before Jason was able to um, leave work and drive out with the girls. And he drove through the night. He worked all day and got home and our girls and Kaylee's boyfriend had done an excellent job at cleaning the house, packing the bags, packing the car, and they were all ready to go when Jason got home. And to that, I'm so grateful for them and the good example that they are for each other. <clears throat> this is gonna be harder than I thought. So Jason drove through the night. It's an 11, 12 hour drive. And I was worried about him doing that, but he knows how to do it and he's very capable of it. Um, I was also worried about the heat. There was a heat wave starting the day he left, or the day after he left. And I, I was very determined to get them here before they got into the daylight, basically. So when he pulled in at eight o'clock in the morning, I was very, very grateful that he got there. Um, Cause driving down through Idaho and Northern Utah is like a heat, a death trap for heat. So he got there safely. Um, and I will kind of roll that footage of them arriving and then um, I'll kind of explain from there. We will. We'll stay busy. Hi, Pookies. You did it. After Good what? job. Oh, wow. oh, Kaylee's still asleep. <laughs> Chelsea, <laughs> you never stop. <laughs> girl because we just got here <laughs> think literally <laughs> donut for breakfast it's pretty good Dang. Last night. <laughs> totally fine totally fine how you doing good except my knee is killing me because i had to except sit weird up because ashley was like no i don't get enough from you no no <laughs> <laughs> it's all good let's you get your stuff out me. okay it's really just my hey. you and didn't stop no, 20 more minutes and I'll be up 24 hours. So I probably need to go to sleep. You need to go to bed. One thing I haven't explained that you have probably seen in at least one or two videos is the pinwheels. The pinwheels um, lined my mom's sidewalk and driveway when I arrived and then they were still there when Jason arrived. Um, in fact, they were still up until the day I left to come down here to my sister's house. So something my mom started a couple years ago for granddaughter days and those are uh, those of you who are new my mom does granddaughter days and that's where every girl in the granddaughters 
that are over five and she invites them to her house for three days and they have activities. They do s'mores by a campfire up the canyon. They go to the aquatic center. They have a spiritual theme as their theme for the entire three days. They have activities and it's, it's just a really good bonding experience and something that the girls <coughs> will keep with them for a lifetime now that she is gone. <coughs> But for the past couple of years, she's been doing this for, for about 10 or 15 years, um, granddaughter days. But for the past couple of years, she's been putting up pinwheels along the si driveway and the sidewalk as kind of a welcoming for the girls to come. And so when I arrived, my neighbors, <coughs> who I call my mamas, um, were lining the driveway with pinwheels in her honor. <coughs> So that's the pinwheels. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, Jason was asked to be a pallbearer at my mom's funeral. So all of the sons, my brothers, I have four brothers, and then all the son-in-laws. So I have one son-in-law. <laughs> Um, brother-in-law and then Jason and then I had two nephews um, that were invited to be pallbearers so there were eight of them and that was a very neat experience to watch all of the men in my life carry my mom to her grave <clears throat> so um, I'm gonna tell you a little story about um, the honey locust tree the honey locust tree was in my mom's yard growing up. And for anyone who knew my mom and her mom, you would know that they, my mom, my grandma was a gardener, an epic gardener. She was on gardener committees. She was in botanical clubs. So in my mom's house growing up, they had a honey locust tree in the front yard. And that tree grew from sapling to massive in her lifetime because she grew up in that house and the owners that bought the house have honored her memory. They knew her and they lived in her neighborhood growing up. So they have honored that yard and that honey locust tree. When my brothers and my dad were at the cemetery trying to find the plot to pick for my mom, um, <clears throat> the first spot that they went to to look at was under the only honey locust tree in the entire cemetery. And my brother instantly knew and remembered her childhood honey locust tree. So this is it. This is where she's supposed to be buried. My nieces and my nephews also were able to take flowers and put them on top of my mom's grave. And that was very special to me. I didn't show their faces out of privacy, but I know their little hands and I can count all 23 of them, including my cute little niece who's only one month old.
also able to go and visit Jason's mom's grave. She's at the same cemetery because she grew up in the same town that I did. Same with Jason's dad, um, which we think is a very neat thing that when we go home, we can visit both graves now. So the day Jason left was two days after the funeral. They just didn't have very much time before he had to get back to work and before the older girls had finals. And they had a really difficult time doing even just a little bit of school and Kaylee had driving school in the car on their computers and with the hotspot. So they decided to go back a day early. So one of the days that they were there, I think it was the day before the funeral, my brother, my brother-in-law and Jason, it seems so silly when you think of it in any other term. But they knew us girls, us sisters, were having a hard time and had so much to do to plan for the funeral. And so they took all the kids that they could to the pool. See, it's silly, but it's not. Because they just knew what they needed to do. It's so, so hard to remember. But I also want to like capture the memory as well for you guys and for myself for later. So the girls didn't get much of an activity this time. They didn't get much grandkid time. They didn't get much cousin time. Um, but I think they're okay with it because they know we're going back in three, four weeks. Um, but they were troopers. They just got right back in the car. Kaylee started to drive on that road trip. Um, it's a very easy stretch of road going up into Idaho. There's nothing there. There's no canyons. There's no rough terrain. So he let her drive for a couple hours and then she rested. Um, and I think because of the hours that she was able to get driving for this, um, she completed her last driving course while she was in the car. And she passed driver's ed. So <clears throat> we probably passed that a couple weeks early because of the hours that she was able to drive. So that was another blessing in disguise. Okay, you guys drive home safe, okay? okay. Be good? Okay. Be okay if you don't, don't get the hot spot working on your iPads, okay? Yeah, okay. Try. All right, Kaylee's gonna start out, Chase. Yep. Okay. Oh. Kaylee's gonna drive. All right, I'll show you the other plant inside, but that one is one that I'm taking home, and then this one is from Jason's dad. So, we're just going to pack that in there nice and tight. Driver badge on there. Do you have one on the other side? Not that I know of. Well, let's get one on the other side. On the highway, people need to know. Okay, yeah, love you. Love you too. Okay. Bye. Looks like the car needs to get washed terribly bad. That's what going through Idaho does. Look at the front grill. Oh, nasty. Oh, man. That's, that's the dirtiest my car has been. Love you guys. Love you. Be good, okay? You got games. Be happy. Go to sleep. Take a nap. Bye, Abby. Thanks for taking care of my plant back there. Everyone loved it. Everyone knew what it was for. Go that way. Don't hit the... <laughs> She's... <laughs> You're good. So that's all I have for you today. I didn't film a lot of what I did <clears throat> either myself or with my sisters. Um, we all went and got pedicures with my sisters and my brother, but I only took photos of it just for fun for our own personal family to look at. <laughs> my brother was his first pedicure. I spent a lot of time and I wish you guys could meet her. I might ask her today if she can meet you because <clears throat> my mom's next door neighbor <clears throat> her name is Kathy and she's a little bit older than my mom but not by much just a few years and her daughter is my age and passed away eight years ago so she knows this grief of someone who's passed before their time and all I have to do is holler from my mom's driveway Kathy are you home and she'll be on her doorstep. 
ready to talk. I spent a lot of time last week on her doorstep. So even if you guys don't get to meet her, I want you to know that I have a really good friend that took care of me. And got me through this, along with a lot of other people. I'm going home again today. We, it was an unexpected decision. We made it last night at midnight. We got a text message from some of our neighbors from growing up that her and her daughter were back in town. They had missed the funeral. Their daughter is a year older than us. We went to middle school and high school together. Very good family friends, and they are in town today. Really wanted us to come up and go to their church with them. It's my dad's church building. It's just a different time block. <laughs> so I'll see my dad again for just a bit and uh, go to their church. Um, so that's what we're doing today. And then in two days, I'm gonna go home and see my family. And I'm very excited to do that and to finish starting this process of grieving. I've said it before, I haven't even really felt like I've started it. So that's all I've got for you. Thank you for watching this and stay tuned. I don't know if I'm gonna need another day off. So if you see a video, enjoy it, comment, and thank you for all your love and support and helping me get through this. Um, you are my friends and I am leaning on my friends for support and love and some may not understand that from a distance with people you've never met, but I want you guys to know that I know my mom is in a good place. She's with her Heavenly Father. She's with her parents who passed years ago. And she's with other loved ones that have passed. She's safe. And she's being loved. And she's looking after us. And she's sending us signs daily that she's okay. Take care.